Hey, folks, it's Tim and Guy. And for you wrestling fans out there from the 80s, we're coming to you from parts unknown, which is sort of true, but not really. Timmy's in Long Island. I'm down in New Jersey. Uh, interesting day today, obviously, off a very newsworthy weekend. But there's some good things to take away from the market today. Tim, what stood out to you? But by the way, uh, you know, thanks for not mailing in tonight. You brought, you brought a, a, a B-plus game. Um, and uh, no, I'm just kidding. You brought your A game. The market's bringing its A game. And, and I think the, the, the anxiety for a lot of investors right now is truly a market that's now run 20% off that bottom. Um, is this going to be a V-shaped? Is this going to be a W-shaped? And without you know, being overly uh, you know, analytical to the letters of the alphabet, um, here's what I'm bullish about. And, and we're not just throwing good news out there because you know, we want to be positive all the time. And I think if you listen to, to, to us on Fast Money, especially Guy, that sometimes you, you might head out and take some Prozac. Look, what's good here is I think the market has held up in the middle of what's been a dynamic uh, of where there have been things going on in the market. There have been hedge funds blowing up. There have been funds that have been not able to meet redemptions. There have been uh, the algos and the machines and all of these things that have led to this extreme move. Uh, but the good news here, here is that you know, we talked about the Fed stepping in and, and, and actually doing their job, which is really to fix the plumbing underneath the market. And, and I think that that's largely what's working. We, I think we've priced in the, the, the health crisis guy. I, I'm just not sure what's on the other side. So um, I'm, I'm bullish that good companies are starting to trade uh, with some level of not only composure from a volatility perspective, but that they've actually regained some technical levels because we were in technical disarray, right? I mean, you tell yeah. me. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. I mean, I hope we have priced in the health side. I think, you know- Hey, you Guy, might... hold on one second. Hold, guy, hold on one second. Sky, stop, scre stop streaming. Daddy's on video right now. <laughs> the home that's, office, you kidding That's me? the home office, Wait. man. No, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I hope we've priced in the health. You know, my concern is um, maybe some of the things we see over the next couple of weeks could scare people in terms of what it means for the broader market. But I understand what you're saying. And in terms of, See, hey, hold on a second. Guy, hold on one second. Honey, I, I'm sorry. You're fine. I love you. Um, that was nicely done. That was nice done. That's, you know, that's I the, think I, those are the soft moments and the sentimental moments with Fast Money. I, I, I think it was excessive on my part. Sorry. Stressful times. It's called for stressful measures. But so, so I'm thinking there's still some room on the upside. You know, we mentioned it earlier today. I think if you're just looking for technical levels, that recent low we saw – which was on or about 2190 in the S&P 500, off the all-time high we made of 3393 probably in February. And it's not ridiculous to think we could see 2800, actually 2790, which is a 50% retracement of that, which is another, I guess, you know, 170 or so S&P points from here. That's a significant right. move. I can't get ragingly bullish in this environment because there's so many unknowns. But I think to Tim's point, I think many of these stocks – Although the bottom might not be in for the broader market, the bottom might be in for some individual names. Yeah, I, I think that's right. Um, and, and we talk often for investors. One of the things that I think is worth trying to do is upgrade your portfolio here. Um, it, it, it's not that you, you want to be unloading names that are down, but there are certainly some names that maybe have snapped back. You know, the, 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 the dash for trash means that the most oversold obviously had the biggest bounce, but do you, you know, without, I, I don't want to encourage anyone to overtrade here, but what I would say is a company like J&J &J or Home Depot um, or Alibaba um, or Apple, obviously, Amazon. I mean, these are names that, that these are, these are good weather, bad weather stocks. And, and I think um, that's one thing you should be thinking about as guy mentions, Hey, am I going to get a chance to buy this here again? Um, those are the kinds of companies that, that I think, look, if you have some powder here, um, those are companies that I don't think are going to be disrupted uh, in a post-coronavirus environment. Yeah, and I throw in I throw in some banks, and I know you probably feel the same way. But you know, at a certain point of this move, at obviously extremes, J.P. Morgan got down about 1.35 times price to tangible book, which is levels I don't think we've seen in probably a decade or so for a bank of that magnitude. I mean, that's a stock that was trading north of two in terms of price to tangible book for a while. So. You know, it gave you an opportunity. I still think it's probably giving you an opportunity. I don't think it's going to get away from you. But if you've been itching to buy these banks, I mean, we have a lot of problems. I'm not sure this time around it's <laughs> in the banks, though. 
No, I, that's fair. Um, and I think if, if you look at valuations in the banking sector, um, they, they certainly have, I think, borne a bigger brunt relative to other sectors. Um, let's, let, let, can we talk quickly about J&J? &J? Um, Johnson & Johnson, one of the great American companies and, and a name that we, you know, we talked about uh, and we talk about on the show a lot. Um, as we assess the, the, the headlines around the coronavirus, J&J &J is one of those names that's come into play. Uh, about possibly being on the leading edge of coming up with a vaccine. Um, this is the same company that actually was in the headlines six months ago for everything that actually most people are quick to pile on pharma companies over, which is the opioid crisis and, and everything that they've been attached to along with some other uh, drug companies. What, what's the real J&J &J guy? Well, it's three different companies, and one of them is a consumer products company. You remember, I think it was... I don't know, 10, 11 years or so ago, they bought Pfizer's consumer products business. I think it was $16 billion or so. Right. And everybody thought they paid through the nose. And it turns out it's probably one of the great steals of all time. Because now you have a company with three different business units, not all equal, but close enough where they should be, especially since most of their bad news seems to be in the rearview mirror, seems to be an issue where this is a stock that it's poised to probably continue to move higher. And on top of that, uh, I'll throw an Eli Lilly at you, which is created... Yeah extraordinarily well over the last couple of weeks, despite what's been obviously a very trying tape. I mean, Lily made an all-time high in February, and it's sort of knocking on the door again. So uh, let's, let's talk about just quick outlook for the rest of the week. We're going to keep doing this. Um, and, and by the way, you know, very, it's almost very stately. Um, are you like in the east wing of your manor house? I mean, it really, uh, there's Wayne, a lot of leather. There's right. a lot of leather. I mean, there's bookshelves. There's oak. I mean, I'm it's impressive. Out. I'm calling Alfred in in a minute. Hopefully he's got a scotch. I also want, you know, if you folks follow us on Twitter, if you want to throw some questions at us, yeah. you know, Tim's Twitter handle, you know, mine. I mean, maybe we can start answering questions as well to make this a little more interactive. So bottom line here, a lot of data coming up this week, uh, notably data on the labor market, which I think people uh, are concerned about. And I don't think we're going to see the settling out of, of uh, you know, where the job market goes. We have some other macro services and, and you know, industrial numbers. So uh, the data is going to be ugly. The market was better. We're going to stay with you. Uh, Tim and Guy out. Your computer just went out, so that's a good enough time to leave. Thanks, folks. <laughs>